As a Canadian TV star a few decades ago, Eleanor Collins had the reputation of being a consummate professional who could take any song and give it meaning. Eleanor was born in Edmonton to pioneering parents who traveled from the southern USA to Athabasca in Alberta to Homestead. They were part of, of a group of people from Oklahoma, Ohio, and Kansas who got together after they saw a, an ad in the paper saying that, come to Canada, 165 acres will be yours. All that is required is that you pay $10 and promise to cultivate the land. And this sounded very good to many families. You have to remember this, uh, well, I'll tell you, 18-year-old young lady, very naive, thought that Canada was something like the, what the Americans think it is, that we are all <clears throat> living in igloos and the weather is all very, very bitter and there are Indians running around. And so I wasn't too sure they were so far out but I didn't realize that we had a place like Vancouver. Who was the biggest influence on your life at that time? Oh, my mother. There's no doubt about it. She only went to grade four, but she went down to the business people, or in fact, the fathers of the city, told them I live in a residential area, but I want to run a hand laundry. I do not want relief. That's what it was called mm -hmm. at those days. I want to be able to earn my own bread for my children. And they gave, they were so uh, taken with the guts, I suppose, of this woman, and knowing that she had a, an, uh, a husband that was not able to work, and they just said, yes, you can have one. Eleanor had done some singing in Edmonton, and it wasn't long before Vancouver discovered her. One day she dropped by CBC Radio to visit a friend and 20 minutes later found herself singing live on the air. That led to the television music shows Bamboola, Parade, and her very own series, The Eleanor Show. Seems like old times having you to walk with. Seems like old times having you to talk with. And I asked if she ever felt compelled as a black Canadian to go to the U.S. and get involved in the 60s equal rights movement. I'm a great believer that wherever you are, whatever corner you are, you can be doing everyone some good, everyone, by making sure that you have yourself centered, that you are a person who's in harmony with the universe, that is um, giving out the right vibes that will help everyone so you don't feel that no oh, I must be in this location because that's the only time I can help but I you didn't ask this but I'm I'm adding this <laughs> I was a person who's very pacifist I would say I have never felt violent but when Martin Luther King was assassinated I was very bitter that's the first time that I really felt resentment, anger, so bitter that it left a bad taste in my mouth, just very, very bitter. And then it passed. Family meant more to you than fame anyway. Well, fame, you see, you, there's a price you pay. It's lovely to be famous, but what do you do when you're take off the makeup and you look at yourself in the mirror and you remember you have youngsters at home uh, wonder what they're doing. Uh, you know, I could never take that. So I said, no. I could say very easily, you know, it's not something big that I did. No, it was just automatic and the natural thing for me. You know, I said, well, there'll be time. And there is. I've got a million ideas right now, Lynn. And I think hey, I'm ready. Do. I have got a couple of shows left in me, and I'm ready. I really am. <laughs> and I believe it. Yeah. And today, Eleanor is involved with the Unity Church, where she's music coordinator and soloist. Hallelujah. And we're going to close tonight's show with a clip from the Eleanor series. You'll recognize Juliet and Alan Miller with Eleanor. Good night, Terry. Good night, Lynn. Good night, all. Good night. When they are low, and even with a turkey.
lucky that you know we're bold. You may be stranded out in the cold. Still, you wouldn't change it for a sack of gold. Let's go on with the show. 